<coughs> right, okay, in this video we're going to look, uh, in this third installment, we're going to look at uh, radioactive decay um, gamma, specifically. Now, gamma decay is uh, slightly different than, um, than the traditional alpha or beta decay, but we'll get straight into it. So, in order to observe uh, gamma decay, um, hopefully you've watched the energy levels video, because otherwise this is not going to make a whole lot of sense. So if you haven't watched it, uh, or if you're a little unsure, I would go back and watch that. Um, but we start off with um, a molybdenum. Okay, so molybdenum is 99 MO on the periodic table. And molybdenum actually beta decays, as we've seen, um, down to, we get some beta decay, down to technetium 99. So that technetium 99 is what, at what we call a high energy level. Now that high energy level is very, very similar to the situation where electrons in, previous, in the previous energy levels video were already at higher energy levels. So remember in the uh, energy levels video, we could have electrons that were high up on the energy level diagram and they could drop down energy levels as a result, releasing a photon of energy. Now, in this case, that's exactly what happens. But instead of the electrons being at a higher energy level, it is the nucleus. So this nucleus is at a higher energy level and we have other energy levels. And as a result, what happens is, is that technetium, when it drops down its energy levels, it drops down an energy level and releases, lo and behold, a photon of energy. And it's that photon of energy that is a gamma photon. Now, in the previous videos, we looked at energy levels and we saw like electrons absorbing energies of colors but as you well remember, gamma is part of the EM spectrum, just the same as color and um, visible light is. So in this case, we're just getting a much higher energy ch change than previously experienced. So we're getting a very high energy change. And just remember, a large amount of energy corresponds to a large amount of frequency and obviously very high frequency EM waves are otherwise known as gamma. Okay, and this is actually a real example of um, gamma waves um, being produced in actually a medical sense because we use these to image inside of the body. So when we uh, the doctor will give you some molybdenum, it will decay down to technetium, and on its way out, as it uh, decays, you will experience um, gamma decay inside your body, but since gamma is very highly penetrating, what tends to happen is the, um, the gamma will come straight out of your body without ionizing anything, which is very, very useful, as you can imagine, So, because uh, you don't want your body being ionized. Right, so um, that's just a brief overview of gamma decay, and that's how gamma decay happens on its own. Please bear in mind that actually alongside a lot of beta decay, even uh, this beta decay here, what you might observe as a result of that, the energy that's given off is also gamma in nature as well. Um, so it's not the only way that gamma can occur. Sometimes it happens alongside alpha and sometimes it happens along beta. Sometimes it will happen alongside both. So there's no kind of specific way of observing gamma and saying, yes, we'll only get gamma, um, apart from this kind of situation where you've decayed from something else, you're at a higher nuclear energy level, and as that drops down, it emits a photon of gamma. And like I said, you'll understand this more if you've watched the uh, energy level uh, video diagram um, video.